So our next assignment is our GIF transformation assignment. And to introduce it, I have these examples, and these examples are pretty straightforward. We're going to do a sketch using something we've already created in the class, at least as part of it. And so I'm going to use the emojis we created for exercise two. And we're going to transform it across nine panels. So we start with a rough sketch. By the end of the whole thing, we will find nine kind of film stills from our animation to showcase that transformation in something that can be printed. And then ultimately what we're working on is a GIF animation that is for screen display. To do this, we're using all freeware. And so we're going to start with PhotoP. And the sketch I'm going to use is here. You want a beginning and a middle and an end, right? All in one setting. We're not changing scenes within nine frames. And so basically, you figure out what your setting is. My setting is just blank. So it's just a blank white setting. And then you figure out what, what are your actors? What are your actions? And my actions are written here below. We have this character, and it's gonna start with my original emoji, and then the, the colors are gonna change, the skin's gonna turn blue, it starts as purple. And then the, the I call them prongs, because they're not really horns here. The prongs are gonna lengthen and turn into horns. The eyes are gonna change expression, they droop a little bit. The, then the fabric's going to start to mold together, and then you're going to start to get stubble on the chin, and then the eyes are going to start to shrink, and then the horns are going to start to move down. The fabric's going to get more complicated, and the horns are going to start to become ears, and then there's going to be more contortion and more details added, and then the final uh, creases will be added. And in general, the transformation is from something really, really iconic, flat, simple, to something more like fantasy illustration-y. So in order to draw this, I went back to my, my files for exercise two, which are admirably organized. And I saw what I had, right? And so now in a new assignment folder, assignment five, I kind of gathered all of those inspirations together. So in exercise two, remember we used that emoji maker site to, to make an emoji, our own original emoji. And then our exercise was to make it our own. So we ended up using vector tools in PhotoP to recreate it. And then I showed you some ways to use layer styles, uh, use outer shadows, inner shadows, texturing, all that stuff, gradient overlays to customize it even more. And so I'm actually gonna be transforming from this to this to this in some form, and then ultimately transforming into something more like this. So these are inspirations <laughs> of a, an orc kind of character that looks more believable, less cartoony and simplified. So I'm going from minimal to representational. All right, so in order to do that, this sketch becomes very important. So I wanna save that sketch. I'll just save it onto the desktop for now and then move it into my assignment five folder. And what we're going to see is just how important like knowing where your stuff is and organizing it becomes for this assignment. Okay, so the sketch is kind of the first thing that you'll turn in for this assignment too. So I'm going to go ahead. And... So this sketch is what I'm going to base my animation on. And then these are some of the what I call assets in animation. These are some of the things I already have built that can help me make that happen but I can always add new things and paint and draw my own things in PhotoP as well. All right, so 
let's head over to photo p and just to remind you what we're doing with it is we're playing out our plan and then we're going to do a rough animatic of our storyboard sketch today just so you see how animation works and then we'll know how we can build these up into more finished panels what are called keyframes and then animate them together and then decide if we have time to put in-betweens what are called tweens between our keyframes to smooth everything out and then we can decide on the timing and what needs to take longer and we can even add other effects so i'm going to start by going to everyone's favorite site favorite free photoshop emulator which is photo p And I'm actually going to create, just like uh, our digital honors mentorship presentation showed, we're going to start a new file because we want it to be perfectly square and we want it to be 8 by 8 inches by 72 pixels per inch. Just dragging these ads off so you don't have to see them. Now, so far, because we've been compositing so much, we've often changed things after the fact with image size. But when you want just full control from the beginning, it's helpful to just go to New Project and then just put in the parameters from the beginning. So I'm going to call it, and this actually gives you the chance to name it, right? And once you've given your file a name, so I'm calling mine FA20 Carl Assignment 5 Animation, then you want to change the dimensions from pixels two inches and then you want to set your inches to be a perfect square at eight inches by eight inches this is a good screen size for for gif animations and then for the dpi which is really the pixels per inch we want to have it at 72 which is the default resolution for screen and animations are always perfect square that's basically 8 inches at 72 pixels per inch is a is close to 600 pixels so we see a square that's close to 600 pixels now I'm gonna bring my sketch into here and if you haven't sketched already and you want to try out sketching on the computer you could always use the the paintbrush tool and just draw your nine frames right but instead of doing that i'm just going to say file open in place then i go to my very organized folders in digital art and assignment five and my sketch now I can stretch it now the other benefit of of having it as a separate thing that I scanned is I have my little notes that I can always refer to and storyboards often have a lot of external notes kind of telling you about something okay so now I have my sketch but I need to organize each frame so what I'm going to do is create a new layer but even more than a new layer I want to create new folders so next to in your in your layer window in Photopea, and this is the same in Photoshop, there's the little post-it symbol that looks like looks like a post-it that will give you a new layer on top of whatever whatever layer you've selected. Next to that is the folder icon, which will give you a new folder. Folders are organizational tools, right? So what we're gonna do is we're, we're gonna create a folder 
nine different folders for each of these frames. And the first thing that's going to go into that folder is our sketch. So I actually don't need a new layer yet because the way I'm going to make it from my sketch is to take the rectangular marquee tool and just roughly select around it. These are just for an animatic. These are not going to be perfect. And then I hit Command J. I duplicate that onto its own layer. And then I hit Control T and I hold down Shift so it doesn't alter. And what I'm going to do is just grow it enough so that my sketchy box goes out of frame. So it's just the barest hint of my container box there. And then what I'm going to do is move that layer into the folder. <laughs> Which I'm having trouble doing. I should be able to just drag and drop it on. Come on. There we go. And now if I really want to be organized, I can rename that folder just one. That's frame one. Now I make a new folder. Then I go back to my sketch and I repeat it for the second frame. You want to use the rectangular marquee tool, select it, duplicate it, move that into the new folder. And you're going to see why we need them in folders once we start refining them. And then using Control T, making them fill the frame. And it doesn't matter if if it looks kind of pixelated, if it looks soft. This is what's called an animatic. This is a guide for our future animation. It's like the blueprint of our sketch underneath our landscape. And what's so lovely about animation, it all looks so effortless at the end, but you're going to see in building it, there is a lot of repetition. And that's good for learning, but it's not so entertaining to watch all the time. So I encourage you to try to follow along. And once you have your sketch, start trying to piece it and format it this way. OK, so in this first video, I'll probably get three or four of these frames placed. I'll get the rest in the next video. And then what we'll be able to do is see how the animation tools that we're going to use, which is a site called gifmaker.me, can help us understand the timing and if our sketch is going to work as an animation. If you're not drawing anything on your computer, then the quality of the animation is dependent on how close your sketches are, right? Like if each sketch is like they're different sizes or they're in different places, then it won't really make sense. Yeah, so what we're doing with the computer is we're resizing our sketch so they all fill, all fill this 8 by 8 inch frame. So the computer is helping us even if our sketches are pretty rough. And well, that, will help, that will help as we start to refine them. But the sketches are not our animation. The sketches are just the plan for our animation. And they help keep us organized. So we know what we're trying to do visually each step. And nothing that is um, fully animated professionally is done so without first being roughly storyboarded.